we will implode more patriotic news. Thank you. What Laura Ingraham just did for Trump will guarantee he's re-elected. Steve Bannon just gave the funny reason Sean Spicer is not in front of the cameras anymore. It was a joke but the liberals still wind all Looney Tunes. Bannon said Sean Spicer gained too much weight so Trump doesn't want him on TV. In truth, White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer has actually been promoted and he is currently looking for his own replacement in the White House spokesman. We all know Sarah Huckabee Sanders has been doing a great job and her role is secure but that will not stop the massive shakeup coming to the White House communications team. Just recently, as the Washington Post exclusively reported, Sean Spicer and White House Chief of Staff Reince Priebus officially reached out to Fox News host and conservative radio superstar Laura Ingraham to inquire about her interest in taking the role of press secretary. And it looks like she will accept. Laura Ingraham has long been under serious consideration for this job, almost from the day Trump won the election. She rebuffed those early attempts after Trump for a couple of reasons but mainly she didn't want to take a pay cut. Laura can't stand watching the bungling from the White House communication team. And after Melania, Ivka, and Jared all came out publicly and told President Trump to make some major moves to this team it looks like he will and Laura may be the one to sort out the mess. Look it is a hard job but getting the messaging right is critical to any president's success. So the constant mistakes and leaks are really doing a disservice to President Trump. When voters, even liberal voters, actually hear what Trump is doing he will win re-election in a landslide. That is why Laura, who will destroy the liberal media narrative and get the real facts out there, will basically guarantee Trump wins re-election. Share this if you know Laura Ingraham will help Trump ruin the liberal media and easily cruise to re-election. H.T. Just in new Obama scattle rocks DC, how corrupt was this person? Judge Andrew Napolitano just joined Fox News to discuss allegations Senator Rand Paul and one other senator were under the watchful surveillance by the Obama administration. He was very close with the Supreme Court Justice Scalia. He then announced huge news that nobody saw coming. Judge Andrew Napolitano stated that the late Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia confided in him that he was under the impression that Barack Obama had put the highest and most important court in the land under the eye of the NSA. Justice Scalia told Napolitano that he frequently thought the court was being watched. And he stated to him that around four or five years ago, Napolitano said. If they had to unmask Senator Paul's name to reveal a conversation he was having with a foreign agent and the foreign agent was hostile to the United States they can do that. That's not what he's talking about. They're talking about unmasking him when he's having a conversation with his campaign manager when he's running in the Republican primary. He went on to say that Obama should be subpoenaed to testify, even though he would lie about it if he saw the unmasked intelligence. The Obama administration watching the Supreme Court means they had no qualms about watching everyone that didn't support every moronic step they made. Constantly selling this nation down the river to our enemies and Obama found it appropriate to watch everyone else because he was untrusting. He was untrusting because he was untrustworthy. It's now wondered that if Scalia was killed to keep things quiet. The autopsy won't be done now, and the late justice deserves to rest in peace. Napolitano making that announcement is just another piece of damning evidence against Obama and his minions. Good job Obama. Way to violate the Constitution every way you can. What Feds Found, Seized in Home of Obama's Spying Will Keep You Up at Night Perhaps all of this commotion about President Trump, his family, his campaign team, and their alleged improper connections to Russia is nothing more than a Democrat-sponsored smokescreen to divert the leftist media, easy to do, from the real scandals involving Hillary, Mr. Obama, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, John Podesta, Huma Abn, and who knows how many others who might be involved in real and serious cases of corruption and alleged felonies. Stranger things have happened. And that scenario does make sense. In fact, 
it would appear possible that Mr. Obama created a Muslim spying from Pakistanis who worked as IT employees for various Democratic congressmen including former DNC Chair W. Wasserman Schultz. These IT consultants would be Mr. Imran Awan along with his siblings and spouses. Now it turns out that the FBI has seized hard drives from the residence of Ms. Wasserman Schultz's employee, Imran Awan which have been smashed in an obvious attempt to destroy whatever data was on them. FBI agents seized smashed computer hard drives from the home of Florida Democratic Rep. Debbie Wasserman Schultz's information technology IT, administrator, according to two sources with knowledge of the investigation. Pakistani-born Imran Awan, longtime right-hand ITA to the former Democratic National Committee DNC, chairwoman has since desperately tried to get the hard drives back, an individual whom FBI investigators interviewed in the case told the Daily Caller News Foundation's investigative group. Mr. A1 is trying to get them back, no doubt, because he must believe they contain incriminating data, and because he also realizes that the FBI has the incredibly advanced technology needed to retrieve data from hard drives, even if they have been physically damaged as these reportedly have. An additional source in Congress with direct knowledge of the case, speaking on condition of anonymity because of the sensitivity of the probe, confirmed that the FBI has joined what Politico previously described as a Capitol Police criminal probe into serious, potentially illegal, violations on the House IT network by Imran and three of his relatives, who had access to the emails and files of the more than two dozen House Democrats who employed them on a part-time basis. Capitol Police have also seized computer equipment tied to the Florida lawmaker. Image result for Imran A1 DNC, what is this with this odd aversion that some on the left have to hiring Americans? Was it absolutely necessary to hire Pakistanis to do this work? Were they properly vetted? Or, to be a bit more conspiratorial, were they hired precisely because of other factors not mentioned that uniquely qualified them to perform whatever work they did? Work they now appear to be trying to keep out of the hands of the FBI, fortunately to no avail. The whole story goes much deeper, but at this point we can conclude that at least Wasserman Schultz, and the IT team headed by Imran A1, desperately wanted to keep her notebook computer and these hard drives out of the hands of the FBI. They have something to hide. In fact, all of those players listed at the beginning of this article likely have quite a bit to hide. Just like a good stage magician uses distraction to get the audience to look where nothing is happening so they don't see what he is really doing, it's more than just a little likely that the whole Trump fracas is no more than such an effort in distraction. Keep watching our list of suspects and you'll likely see the real story. Source, Daily Call Breaking Trump removes federal judge for trying to implement Sharia law in America. 22nd Circuit Court of Appeals Justice Handsome Alilowala E. Smith made headlines this week when he overturned a ruling out of Dearborn, Michigan. The ruling allowed two critical and violent tenets of Sharia law to be practiced here in the United States. When asked why the feds have the right to allow a man to brutalize his wife for speaking with another man and to beat her nearly to death if she were to act on her impulses. The judge mentioned the systematic infusion clause and said the Sharia law should be allowed because the 14th Amendment guarantees them the rights guaranteed by other states. Those laws may be acceptable to savages, but here in America, we have higher standards. Elaha Smith noted that the 14th Amendment doesn't necessarily exclude foreign influence from being allowed by law, citing the Christmas holiday as an example. Christmas is a Christian holiday exclusively. Yet if you're Muslim and you want to go about your day without being bothered you can't because the laws of a city in a city in Rome take precedent over the First Amendment, which guarantees no state-sponsored religion. A federal Christmas holiday is just that. With that as precedent, understanding that a higher court may reverse it, my decision is that items 1 and 2 on the docket are allowable between family members as prescribed by Sharia law. President Trump used an old precedent and an executive order to remove Alalala Wa'arlali Smith from the bench, citing gross negligence of his duties and wanton disregard for the United States Constitution, reports as American as Apple Pie. Democrats can't stop complaining over this, claiming that since the appointment wasn't Trump's, 
he can't use the precedent to fire him. Trump responded that people always want him to think about the office in these situations. His only statement was, the office had no choice but to let him go for the good of the country. What do you think about this? Share this on Facebook and Twitter scroll down. Shocking Democrats are reeling after Trump obliterated seven huge government programs. Democrats are raging over Donald Trump's proposition of the budget plan. President's proposal is expected to reduce unnecessary and lavish government spending and get control over the U.S. debt for the next 10 years. It also involves cutting taxes and repealing the bloated government programs. But apparently, the problems in the government were way larger than any of us assumed. According to Trump administration, the government has wasted a fortune on terrible programs. Which is more, the ex-government has not stopped funding projects which have been expired. The Daily Wire reported, Mick Mulvaney, the director of the Office of Management and Budget, announced that the Trump administration has discovered approximately $300 billion in federal spending and programs that have expired. This unauthorized spending has a real impact on balancing the budget. The Trump administration has not yet announced a full list of the programs that are unauthorized, but a quick review of the 2018 budget found 11 programs that Trump is terminating because Congress has not renewed the program in some time. Below are some of the expired programs and agencies and the amounts they've spent in recent years. Department of Commerce, Economic Development Administration, $251 million Department of Commerce, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Grants and Education, $217 million Department of Health and Human Services, Community Services Block Grant, $714 million Department of Homeland Security, Port Security Grants and Transit Security Assistance, approximately $218 million Department of Housing and Urban Development, Choice Neighborhoods, $125 million Department of Housing and Urban Development, Choice Neighborhoods. This program has spent approximately $150 billion since 1974, without any measurable impact Department of Housing and Urban Development, Indian Community Development Block Grant, $60 million The list goes on and on. All of these programs have expired, with Congress refusing to renew them. Yet cash was still flowing into them, with everyone looking the other way. Many of these programs have not been proven to even be effective. We would be happy to hear your thoughts and predictions.